Never thought I'd get to say it, but Crash Bandicoot is back and looking better than ever. Since I don't have a PS4 at the moment, I thought all I could do was sit by the sidelines and watch everybody else have fun. But then it hit me. I can still talk about Crash all I want. I've got the original games for goodness sake. So in celebration of the Insane Trilogy, I'm counting down some of my favorite levels from the games that started it all. The ones that stand out from the crowd and that I'm eager to play for myself in the remake, whenever that happens. So now, without further ado, I give you my top 10 favorite Crash Bandicoot levels, OG Trilogy. Enjoy, everybody! How fitting that the first level on the list is where it all started for this series. There isn't much to end Sanity Beach, but that's what I like. It's just a nice little stroll from the beach through the jungle. Nothing too stressful while showing you the ropes. And it's backed up by a modest but memorable tune that sets the mood just right. Playing this level, I always think of humble beginnings, not just for Crash Bandicoot, but for Naughty Dog too. They had been around for over a decade prior to Crash, but it was their real claim to fame, what really put them on the map. You hear about this critically acclaimed studio that takes the world by storm with every game they make these days, and to think it all started with a weird little bandicoot washed up on the beach. It might sound strange all of that is paired up with this level in my head, but that's just how it is. I play it and feel like I'm witnessing history in the making, and that's just really cool. And just like that, we go from the easiest level of Crash 1 to the hardest. Whether you're playing it casually or not, it's never a smooth ride through Slippery Climb. It has the kind of challenge where you gotta buckle down and can't afford any distractions. You can't even talk to yourself until you see the one checkpoint and take a quick breather. But if you're going for the red gem here, that is not happening. From when you start until you make contact with the end goal, you better pray you don't slip up once, <laughs> Or guess what? You're doing it again until you get it right. In times like these, I would turn down the TV volume so I'd have complete focus to varying degrees of success. With all that said, I do enjoy this level. I like a good platforming challenge, and trekking through enemy lines in a thunderstorm is as cool as it is a little bit spooky. I'm sure this place would have scared me witless if I played it as a kid. I hated thunderstorms, and the music would likely let my imagination run wild with scary imagery, but that's beside the point. Slippery climb, stressful but enjoyable, though I'm sure it's a cakewalk compared to that stormy ascent. Lord, have mercy on my soul. Toxic Waste is as straightforward as it's laid out to be, but like Insanity Beach, that's the beauty of it. All you do is run, jump, and spin, and it's got a serious rhythm, with a music track that says, ain't nothing gonna stop me. You just wanna keep that momentum going, but choose not to stop and you'll eventually get killed by a bouncing barrel. Those things always give me a little panic attack because I can never tell if I'm in the line of fire until it's too late. And though the level is hard, completing it 100% is very doable, unlike some other levels in the game. No gimmicks, no hidden boxes, it's a good place to get your feet wet for gem collecting. All you gotta do is not die. This is a great example of Crash 1's simple yet charming gameplay, and I'm only the 500th person to make a passing Donkey Kong reference here, right? Right, now that we got Crash 1 out of the way, it's time to get into the good stuff. And it might seem a bit vanilla, but man, I love the first level of Crash 2. Turtle Woods is such a relaxing way to start a new adventure, especially coming off the heels of the first game. A place to learn all the new tricks Crash 2 has up its sleeve. And if you're like me, a place you'll keep coming back to. I like first levels in games that have more to them than meet the eye, like Jungle Hijinks from Donkey Kong Country. It's got a secret bonus path and is home to the blue gem, which you'll only get if you ignore everything you know about Crash and not hit a single crate. It also has one of my favorite tracks in the series. I can't think of Crash 2 and not think of it. It's like an upbeat lullaby. Plus there's the rainy jungle setting with the background wildlife. Even the name Turtle Woods just sounds so cozy. This was my first played game in the original trilogy, but I did play Wrath of Cortex years earlier, so going in here it felt as familiar as it did new. All that combined is what makes it a great level in my eyes. Crash 3 is my favorite of the trilogy, with one big reason being the variety in level themes, and the first level starts that variety strong. If you played the Crash games in order, what you knew from the series was mainly natural set pieces like jungles and rivers, but Toad Village is unlike anything before it. You're thrown into medieval times, and it's a great introduction to the game's time travel theme. It's what I would imagine a renaissance fair to be like. Everything feels so much more wide open and alive. It shows how far the series had come in just two years, and you get the 
the crash formula tuned to its finest here. These levels are also great fun to speedrun when going for the time relics. I got my first platinums here and it gave me the drive to try the other levels. And I should mention that you get some of the game's best death animations in these stages, and I put double header on here if only just for this one. Funny how I talked about all the first stages in each crash game, but I guess it just goes to show how good they all are. And no doubt they saved the best first for last. I hope that makes sense. When talking about revisiting levels for the sheer fun of it, I can count on Crash 2's Polar Bear levels for a good time. They're a great change of pace from the norm in where you make a beeline to the end at breakneck speed. Thankfully, Crash has no neck to speak of, so you can just focus on avoiding obstacles. It's smooth to control, and smashing boxes and watching fruit rack up feels really good. Very arcade style, if you ask me. The music is what I'd call frantically adorable, capturing the wackiness of the whole situation, and it always puts a big grin on my face. That and seeing Polar brush off everything that kills Crash like it's nothing. And each level has a different style. Bear takes place in the day with light flurries, Bear down in the evening with an orange tinge of sunset. But my personal favorite is the secret level Totally Bear, having the best overall challenge and a cool visual look. I like to think it takes place in the most northern parts of the Arctic at a time when the sun never rises. And the snow that subtly comes and goes is a nice touch. Not much else I can say. These levels are fun in its purest form. The Ancient Egypt levels are among my favorite archetypes in Crash 3, and if I had to pick just one, I think I'd go with Tomb Waiter. This stage features a mechanic only ever used here. You're at the mercy of rising water, and needless to say, you don't want to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's a gimmick that keeps you on your toes and has you thinking more than usual. You can't just run ahead guns blazing, you gotta plan things out before you make that next jump. That said, you can pull off a lot of close calls and insane tricks with enough practice, so yeah, I take it back. And those those skills will come in handy when you're going after this level's relics. You'll be here a while, but mastering the timing of the water well enough to get a gold is its own reward. Or platinum if you're that crazy. Tomb Waiter's no walk in the park, but it's one of the best designed levels in the whole trilogy. And uh, have fun with that death through by the way. You can't talk about Crash without bringing up the chase levels, and dare I say, Unbearable is the best in the series. It starts off by giving you a heart attack, more so than usual. They swap the snowball for a giant polar bear, and if that wasn't enough for you, don't worry, cause the tension only gets higher. There's obstacles everywhere, including this wooden gate electric fence combo that never fails to get me at least once, and just when you think you're safe, it's not long before it all starts again. The last third brings in Little Polar for one last mad dash, and there's no better way to send the level off. First time it happened I went, oh we are not about to do that are we? Well holy crap, this game is amazing! This level's also got a couple secrets, both of which I found through complete curiosity the first time through. Here I went back to check if Polar was okay, and that curiosity led me to finding the secret warp room, which then unlocks Totally Bear. It is just non-stop thrills with this one. Is this a cop-out? I guess it is, but I don't really care. Orient Express and Midnight Run are very similar to the bear levels, but here they took that concept and cranked it up to 11. Taking place on the Great Wall of China while it's still being built is such a cool idea, and everything about it sucked me in. The oriental music, the Chinese banners, and I swear, those dragons flying around the place make it magical. Riding on Pura, you can sprint to your heart's content as opposed to a quick dash with Polar, and that completely changes how these levels play. It also makes the time trials here a wild ride, making them my favorites to attempt relics on. You gotta know them inside and out just to barely get a good score, but no matter how many times I failed, I was immediately raring to go again because I knew it could be done. And wouldn't you know it, after years of trying, I finally got the Midnight Run Platinum on this recording session. I also can't forget to bring up the little nuzzle these two do at the end, it is just so adorable. When scripting this, I wasn't sure what would be number one, but now I feel confident in giving that spot to Dino Might. It's basically Crash's greatest hits molded into one big level. It starts off as traditional 3D, and halfway in they get into some animal riding with Baby T. It's pretty short and you can outright skip him, but I mean, why would you pass up riding a dinosaur? Then it sprinkles in some 2D side-scrolling stuff and caps off with a classic chase sequence. There's even a gem route where you can try and find the secret level Egipus Rex, or rather, look it up 
shop slash stumble on it by complete accident. Crash 3 was a bit too secret with the secrets when it had them. Aside from the replay value, this stage is filled to the brim with detail. I get the feeling of being in a museum exhibit, especially looking at this guy, and the colors here always grab my attention, notably on the lava. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? They pulled out all the stops with this one, and that's why it's my favorite. One may even say it's... Dynamite! Sorry, sorry, I couldn't resist! Thanks for watching everybody, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed what you saw today, feel free to give this video a like, share it with a friend, subscribe, check out my social media links, you know, all that good stuff. And feel free to share some of your favorite Crash Bandicoot levels in the comments below, trilogy or otherwise. Oh, and in case you missed it, I launched a Patreon page. Check it out and see if it, along with the rewards I got, entice you. You can get stuff ranging from weekly blogs to more in-depth behind the scenes stuff to even me sketching something for you. But again, for all the details, be sure to check out the page itself. And with all that said, I will see you guys next time. Later!